This was Prime Minister Andrew Holness during the recent budget debate, indicating that his administration has been able to do a number of projects that others could only dream of. If you have a good idea, don't let it go to waste. Give it to me, let me implement it. I am the best baby father for ideas. That claim cannot be substantiated because the Prime Minister himself has no clue of the DNA of ideas. And with that, Senator Crawford took the government to task for how some ideas are being implemented. Ideas he claims have their origin with the opposition PNP. For example, entertainment zones. He said the original plans focused not only on large zones such as Fort Rocky and Jam World, but also community zones to host activities and using select parking lots for events. Senator Crawford insists the two announced entertainment zones will only cater to large promoters. Work is ongoing on Fort Rocky and the government announced that the Jam World Entertainment Complex in Portmore St. Catherine is set to become Jamaica's first 24-hour entertainment zone. Jam World was to be a D-zone, a party town, a space that had movie theater, dining, that you could go there from Senator Bunting, 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and you will just have a full night with entertainment spaces, movie towns, and everything there, a, 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 a party town and not simply one big venue when we don't have 20 big events for the year. So Damien Crawford shut up on Joe Wellness, lock him down completely, and shut up Nigel Ligel Clark as well, people. Now, inside this video, Damien Crawford hold nothing back, and he also speak about the ideas of entertainment um, venue for 24-hour entertainment purpose where they are the ideas to put it in many parishes and not for just one class of people which is the the, the higher class of people but for everyone the Amen crawford were thinking about doing a three phase of um that program where you would have a phase one phase two and phase three now in that case like phase one now wouldn't be if he the high class people them like over jam railway them people they say and don't have mobile don't have, um here one plus other parishes that have uh, big venues or big land where they can have uh, big venues and so forth now how much rent over jam world right now it will cost uh, maybe a uh, five hundred thousand for rent that venue and all of them something the people maybe more because you know it's a big venue and a regular venue right now is for like 150,000, 200,000. So, who can afford the venue over Jam World? Those are the questions that Damien Crawford were asking. Now, Damien Crawford also went on to say the Prime Minister should consider letting the, 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 the lower class people, like the poor people, they keep them regular dance. Have them own space as well, where they can keep them dance till they light as well. You understand? Not just the rich people them alone. But people, bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. I hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful morning. Now my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every and uh, any situation, just always remember to call upon God. Always remember to pray. Because a prayer day, keep the devil away. Now my viewers and my subscribers, we have a lot coming up inside this update. But we can run the intro and come back. We soon follow. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. Them. We continually support the channel and I help the channel to grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're new viewers, first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell. So whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. All right. Remember to share the content. Share it with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform so the message can reach out to other people as well. Now, people, we now waste no time. We just have to play this video. So remember to like up the video and share the video as well. Before I even start my presentation, I think that there are some things that just need a little clarity 
um, as we move forward. The first is the whole concept of no new taxes. I've been a big debate. I don't know why it is so important because it don't seem to be a political point for the voters. The voters don't seem to be acting upon the promise of no new taxes. And the last election um, in the 26th of February would suggest that having said it a million times, it was a very little moment. And there is some confusion as to who won the last election. Just today, we hear over that side said that they won the election. Mm -hmm. And over this side said that we won the election. I think the only fair solution is a rematch. Uh. <laughs> so they should call the general election. And let us see who really won the election. We don't want it quarrel, quarrel, quarrel. Because I remember the night of the election, our side was happy. Mm -hmm. Very. And their side was sad. So therefore, it seemed they were happy. They were sad that they won. And they would suggest that we were happy that we lost. But... <laughs> But let me just put a little mathematics to it based on some numbers presented by Senator Bunting and leader of the opposition, um, Mark Golden. It is mathematically impossible for the increase in the taxes collected to be as a result of economic activity, yet taxes as a percent of GDP increases. It's a mathematic impossibility. Explain. Let us example. If GDP, which measures economic activity, at point one is four, and taxes at point one is two, if economic activity increases further or greater than tax collection, then the denominator increases greater than the numerator, creating a smaller percentage. So if at point one, tax as a percent of GDP was 24%, and at point two, tax... They may make a presentation. But that's the, point, that's the point I'm making. That's the point I'm making. No, 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 no. We'll come to that second point. I'm saying... One second, one second. It has been presented that there are one, two, three, four reasons, one of which is economic activity. If economic activity is outpacing the numerator tax collection, then the 24 at 2015 should not be 28 at 2024. It should be 23, 22, 21, etc. I, and, and I'm not in the tax thing for understand more than just the mathematics of it don't make sense. The second problem they have is the concept of tax per capita. Tax per capita kind of assumes that everybody pays the same tax. Just like we have income per capita. It's a, if everybody made the same income, what would that income be? It is not a truthful representation. It is now 7,000 per capita, but some people making 70,000 and some people making 1,700. But if everybody made the same, the per capita taxes Senator Bunting reported has increased by almost $190,000 per person. Within a society, there will be people who are dependent like children and people who are independent, like some adults who earn. And there will be some adults who are not earning and also dependent. But when you put the per capita, it wipes out all of that. It says each person is paying X amount. Right. The argument that more people are employed, when 83% of the people employed don't pay income tax, they were below the threshold. <laughs> So the only way the more people employed could have been the basis is if they were in the 17%, the higher threshold. The probability of that to be true is unlikely. Most entrants within the employment 
what one second the poor don't pay income tax the poor don't pay income tax i'm explaining that i'm coming to that so 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 so, so, so therefore what it means therefore is that the, the 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 only contribution from those not paying income tax is in the VAT tax, the value added tax called the GCT. But they were eating before. They never start eat when they start work, otherwise they wouldn't have survived to start work. So they were eating before. And so therefore, all it means is if each person on average is paying more, then more must be collected from these people. It is not a matter of efficiency because you have negated that by saying each person is paying by the per capita amount. But it's not, and it's not a big deal because nobody votes for that. <laughs> because with all you are saying, the lady Senator Bunting spoke to votes on if her life is better off or worse off, whether you want tax or no tax. She is going to measure her opinion on how I feel about my current circumstance. The only thing is because I have some students here. I have to correct the mathematical. Yes, yes, yes. Because I'm having some coming up and I don't want that to be. Huh? Not mathematical. You can add now another option to say you're more efficient, but efficiency is negated by the per capita. Because efficiency would mean I'm collecting from more people. It's negated by the per capita because those persons were calculated in them. But make with that shoulder. Make with that shoulder. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. All right. They're yeah, with that shoulder. They're not going to get it. The second thing I want, and this is important for us to consider, is the whole productivity conversation. The productivity conversation is somewhat misplaced in Jamaica because we fail to acknowledge that service economies often report lower productivity. In economics, it's called the Baumol disease. The Baumol disease says the characteristics of service cause for it to find difficulty in productivity. Let us look at one characteristic, perishability. The service ends when the person leaves. So therefore, if you're working in dance factory, you can make your 10 for the day. And you can store five if five don't sell. The hotel don't have that capacity. If the room don't full tonight, it just don't full tonight. It can't store it for tomorrow. That reduces the, 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 the productivity. It also assumes inseparability. The client must be present. So therefore, if a waitress can serve ten people, but only three people did it, seven is wasted, she can't do nothing. But if I can make 10 chairs and only three people, it don't matter. I can make my 10 chairs and put down seven. It, so a lot of even people at the tax office, them they don't do nothing, not do nothing, not do nothing until two. <laughs> and when everybody comes now, we say, boy, they're unproductive because they only serve three people for the day. It, that, that inseparability. If we're going to really look upon the productivity conversation, we might need to look at the structure of our economy to maybe shift to some level of manufacturing and other things that don't have the Baumol disease. This is a global conversation. So therefore, it is a... And I am not suggesting that there's not need for productivity gains. I'm saying if the economy continues to do more hotels and more services, we are going to have a fight to get those productivity gains. Yes. And so therefore the structure of the economy will impact on the measured productivity because of that. The final productivity impact of services is variability. Your learning over time don't give you equal benefit because the requirements vary so greatly. So when you learn to make a table, you make a table, you make a table, you eventually become a perfect table maker. When you serve a person, serve a person, because you're not serving the same person, it don't give you equal efficiency. And so that also becomes a quarrel of productivity. So therefore, but these are things that researchers have, have shown. Yes, it's not a, it's not a 
It's not that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's bomb all right economic books. Yes, yes, yes. Me, but, but. And, that, and I'm not saying that we don't need more productivity. I'm saying that a service economy must factor the service component. Yeah, 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 yeah. And debated. Others have agreed with Dan. That the Baumal disease don't exist. But others have agreed with me. So if we're going to really look into it, then we have to look into all aspects of it so that we can have a fulsome conversation. But today the budget presentation and the budget is really, no, that is Kamina's. A capture of, she always have these beautiful flags. And, yes, yes, yes. Is a capture of ideas. The budget is indicating what is important to us, what's our priority, how much you think we should spend on it, and, and is a capture of ideas. And so therefore, we have to now seek to understand ideas. And ideas is the product of politics. It is for this reason why you'll find political parties seek to defend ideas, because it's the product of politics, it is what we sell. And to this extent, um, we will come today to discuss those ideas. Indeed, in his own budget presentation, the Prime Minister claims that he is the best baby father oh for ideas. Oh and I put it to you that that claim cannot be substantiated because the Prime Minister himself has no clue of the DNA mm. of ideas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a cover the DNA. The, uh, what? I'm confused by that. The DNA of I, I, that's what he said. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Maya. I, I am, I, but I'll come back to that. Yes, yeah. What are the DNA? The first hurdle of an idea is that you must know what is right. You must know what's desired. If you do not know what is desired, then you cannot compare it with the second hurdle of an idea what exists. The only way one can come to a conclusion of what is wrong is by comparing what is desired to what exists. So if it is Senator Bunting that you believe the appropriate plate of food should have three dumplings, and you have seen the existing plate with four, then there's a problem of too much dumpling. Equally, if you see an existing plate with two, there is a problem of too few dumpling. So the only method of knowing the problem is to prescribe what is right, to analyze what exists, and then to define what is the problem. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's now, yes. Huh? No, see too much dumpling in there. Now, at this time, the solution, which is the final hurdle of an idea, it comes from the first understanding of what exists, what is right, and what is wrong. Because the four plate need to minus one, that's the solution. And the two plate need to add one, that's the solution. So if you haven't gone through those four stages, simply taking the end result is not the essence of an idea. I can put it to you that we have had two manifestos put forward in 2020. One manifesto put forward by the Jamaica Labour Party and one manifesto put forward by the People's National Party. The manifesto is supposed to tell the country what we intend to implement in the years after the election, meaning in 2020's the election, between 2020 and the next election, these are our commitments. In the budget presentations led by the JLP government, they have placed some ideas for which there was no place in their manifesto. And those ideas were somehow found in the People's National Party's manifesto. 
Well, look at that. Look at that. One of them, to clear search of the JLP's manifesto. Clear search is on the line, on the internet. They said that they'll do entertainment zones. There is nowhere to be found in the 2020 manifesto. They have now said they're going to implement no guarantor for the student loan. That was not in the JLP's manifesto. They, sorry? There was, yes. Senators on both sides, on both sides. But, but, but and Senator Mr. Crawford, focus. Don't focus on. I am not focused don't on focus them. So on, I'm focus on my children up there. <laughs> well, well, yes. that may serve you better. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I'm talking to them. So, right. but senators on both sides. No, no. Everyone wishes to hear the presentation of Senator Crawford. They know to Google. Yes. And not the buzz that is coming from the other members, including. <laughs> Yes. Members on your side, Senator Crawford. So, paternity let, let leave. Us be quiet, please. Paternity leave, not in their manifesto. The electricity assistance not there. was not in their manifesto. And yes. the tools for trade was not in their manifesto. We're still on the appropriation bill because these are being funded in the bill that is before us. I speak first, Mr. President, about the DNA of the entertainment zone. And I can say that I am one of those persons who is the chief defender That's right. of the entertainment industry. I have been a soca warrior, a reggae ambassador, a dancer, a guinea gag, a fashion guru, a drama king. I have been a chief defender of the entertainment industry. But what has been, <laughs> leave me alone, man. What has been proposed by the government to have one venue as a zone is impossible to work for what we hope to gain for the entertainment industry. Right. It is only another example that this is a big man government that only seeks to find solutions for those who are of a wealthy disposition. A simple understanding of economics which you claim, would t I will come to that, will tell you that one venue, demand and supply alone, will cause for the price to be out of most people's affordability. But additionally, most entertainment activities do not use a venue. Most entertainment activities are community specific even if it has a venue. So to claim that, oh, we're going to be this great answer to entertainment and put it in Palisados or put it in, in um, Portmore is a misunderstanding of what we left there. The misunderstanding is that we proposed at the time four zones. The first zone, zone A, was a community zone that the community could indicate the days and the places that they were willing to go against the noise abatement instruction. So therefore, a community in Westmoreland could say the play field on a Saturday is the place that we will allow events to go past 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock, and that is the community zone. Another community might say we'll do Friday and Saturday, depending on how much the community wants to participate. And Raytown might say we'll take Wednesdays only. There might be another community, like some places up in the New Kingston, that say, no day, we don't want no day, because our community is against yeah. the disturbance in totality. With over 2,000 events per month in Jamaica, registered by the parish councils, not the ones that don't register, it is impossible for entertainment zones to be an answer without the community zones. The second were the B zones where the parking lots, etc., that were within commercial spaces and therefore created less disturbance for the citizenry, like downtown Kingston, for example. So therefore, at the end of the night, you would transform those parking lots 
into zones and by extension persons could book those zones and go into those zones as the B zones. The third zones was for the big events. And those were the Fort Rockies. And those were the Portmore activities. Yes, they, they, they told me they were had to leave for two. So, when you have those zones, with the community zones for regular activities, with the, with the B zones for medium-sized activities, and with the C zones for large activities, that is when the entertainment zone concepts can work and start to make sense. But when you now ignore that, and say you're just going to open two places that make music can go on in Kingston forever. Only one promoter would be able to do that. And this is consistent with how the JLP has functioned. They have functioned in that way because when we had a state of emergency in St. James, it was paused so that some fest could be held. They act that way. Because when we had the COVID lockdown, Risk Cafe had one of the biggest activities that was approved. And so therefore, this whole, not to mention our hotel. So this proposal is not our idea because it lacks the solution that is necessary. It simply took a concept that we had proposed, misimplement. And possibly kill the concept. Yes, yeah. I am concerned because we have already lost one possible zone, which was Seventh Heaven, which, when they had an event there, there could be no passing to the airport because of traffic. Yeah. When that zone was identified, it was to be park and ride from out by care yeah. and not people driving all the way down to the venue. So the misimplementation of the idea killed the idea. So when I hear some people say, so what if they do it? Then we are concerned because Jam World was to be a D zone, a party town, a space that had movie theater, dining, that you could go there from Senator Bunting, 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and you will just have a full night with entertainment spaces, movie towns, and everything there, a, 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 a party town, and not simply one big venue when we don't have 20 big events for the year. And those big events were never affected by the Noise Abatement Act. The Noise Abatement Act is one of the biggest examples of Jamaica's prejudice because jazz and blues never ever lock off, some fest never ever lock off, thing never ever lock off. No big event, carnival go through the whole night and move through the whole town. But round robin, night night, birthday party, pan chicken, any small event. So when you put a zone for events that never used to lack of, all they do now is to legitimize the prejudice that you have been working on for a long time. Yes. Yeah. If you don't, yes I do. I just don't support prejudice. Yeah. I agree that carnival should be able to get its night. What I don't disagree, what I don't agree is that a man now who is competing with carnival in another space can't get his night. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I agree that some fest will get its night. But how would I grow to compete with some fest if some fest have that unfair advantage of going till seven and me like half at two? Right. Then I will never grow to some fest. And so, no, Don't that bore has never been my, 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 my Achilles heel, I, I, I must say. <laughs> you, 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 you it's so easy to get distracted, Senator Crawford. Yes. Focus, man. Focus. No, I'm saying he must watch your YouTube views after. But don't get distracted by the sort of us coming. Okay. I'm bringing up my kids from Queens now watching as well. But the point I'm making to you, therefore. <laughs> the point I'm making to you is that the law as is don't even allow for an entertainment zone. 
The law as is, don't say that the event may lock off at two. The law says it shall. So until there is a change in that aspect, then there can be no entertainment. So when Senator Bunting, the, 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 the people that they put to shadow me on the internet from, from that side, asked why we never did. We never did it because we were, we were hamstrung by the wreckage of the economy to the point that we had neither money nor human resource to implement nothing that we wanted to do. Everybody that wrote a law had to be writing IMF laws. Everybody that could be contributing had to be contributing to IMF instructions. It's hard to debate when the concept does not make no sense. Yeah. You know, it, it's like yeah. you're, you're, you're talking to your friend and you say, you know, Bounty Killer is a better DJ than Beanie Man. And I'm saying, but Beanie Man, Beanie Man better than Michael Jackson. You're like, what? Huh? <laughs> oh, you know, you're, <laughs> how it reaches that? Sense. It just don't make no sense. In 2011 to 2018 to, to, to 2015, most of the human resource for law changes which are not many Senator Webby, were dedicated to IMF activity. I'm facts, speaking facts. to you but as a person who was in the, was in, the, in the government. That when you went to the drafts person, you were not secondary, you were tertiary, yeah. if it wasn't IMF or security. So that's one resource that was unavailable to fact. change laws. The second aspect was that after the JDX, the NDX, the, all these things, the funds available, the budget will show, yeah. was nowhere near the funds available now. But the concern that I have is not that you are seeking to implement an idea. It's that you are implementing it in what we knew from conversations at the time was an improbable method to do it correctly yeah. by going one zone at a time. When we did the Palisados sound testing and identified old coal wharf, identified um, um, uh, Fort Rocky and five others, we said we will do Fort Rocky as an example to private investors that it could work. Not that we would do Fort Rocky as a standalone first zone. No. Could you? Yes, I accept. I accept our, 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 our role and our error. And I accept that we will change that error when we get back into government. Because there's no doubt that when it comes to the idea of the Noise Abatement Act, and Joelness is not the father. <laughs> when it comes to the idea of the entertainment zone, and Joelness 99% probability, that is not the father. And additionally, we are not signing any adoption papers because he has proven himself to be one of the greatest enemies of entertainment. Blaming them for anything that he has failed about, including crime and criminal activity. And when COVID struck this country, entertainment was the last to be considered by this government. And when they were considered, it was so immaterial that nobody got anything from it. That's right. That's right. You tell, you tell and let us look further at the policies of this government that serve as an albatross around the entertainment neck. State of emergency. Every time a state of emergency is called in a parish, the participants in entertainment suffer. The speaker's time has expired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. President, given that the speaker's time has expired, I move that we give him the additional time to finish in a short, in a short order what he, what he plans to say. <laughs> <laughs> the question yes. I've been... Been posed. Those in favor? Aye. Those against. Ayes have it. Continue, yes. Senator Crawford.
every time there's a state of emergency. If you think a liar, ask DJ Ken Kentucky, down in St. James, who can't get to keep nothing because everything lock off at 11 and 12. Every time a state of emergency sneak up on us, all who did invest in promotion and advertising for them event three months ago, there is no grandfathering. It lack off them, lose them money. There is no body where they could consider giving them back a contribution. It is just dead and gone. Every time that there is a state of emergency, three, four, five months, all the round robin, all I would show them round robin, which is like a partner. Nobody get back that. They're just dead. So people know that this is just a political ploy trying to change the narrative but not trying to change the nation. And if they were trying to change the nation, they would have engaged those who were at the forefront of planning this out. Right. In the middle of the night testing sound. They were out there, myself, being scientific about it. To say, yo, okay, let's have a giant parliamentary group then. To say how entertainment should be treated and how the Nice Abatement Act should be reviewed. If you're serious about it. But they're not serious about it. The second is paternity leave. And again, when we considered paternity leave, it was on the basis that some reports suggest, Senator Webby, that the Jamaica single parent experience is 47%. The world average is 8%. The United States said they had a crisis with 23%. We have 47% single parent experience. And when you have that single parent experience, the child don't only lose the support of one. He loses the support, they say, of up to 15 to 30 people. Simply the family of the father alone can come to 10. I have, what, 11 uncle and auntie on my mother's side. I'm 54 cousins. <laughs> my mother's side alone. Then I add my friend them from the illustrious champs winning Kingston College. And uh, <laughs> you're wondering when the channel was coming. And then I add the Senate and the People's National Party. And then I add my colleagues because I can tell you, my daughter, Matthew, you have to do something if something needs to be done. <laughs> that is the circumstance. That a child that would have not had me would have True. long lost. True. They say from the research that a child who is in a single parent experience is likely to be more inclined to be in poverty, more likely to have physical, mental, and behavioral health problems, disrupted brain development, shortened educational trajectories, contact with child welfare and justice system and employment challenges in adulthood. They say children from these families are also more likely to have poor life outcomes, low income um, um, survival ability, live in less safe communities, limited access to quality health care, and, and, and limited access to comprehensive support and enrichment activities. When we recognize this disparity of women-led households, single parent experience, and the contribution to our, our negative circumstances, we said we should try making a bond between the father and the child from early by putting in paternity leave. That was why we proposed paternity leave. We also considered gender equity and recognized that if we have 80% small businesses, then some people will see a young female as a higher risk hire due to the cost of maternity leave. And so if we removed that differentiation, then a young female is no longer a higher risk hire. In fact, it changes the reality where a young male is now a higher risk hire because every week he can meet paternity leave. But when you have four people working for you and two get pregnant, you then have to find salaries for that three months, two months. 
And so, no, no. Some of these things, we have to just reason them out. If you have an 80% small business, yeah, man, but just reason it out. You have 80% small business occurrence. The small business have three, four people. The person who is in a business is concerned about cost and risk. The biggest concern. He therefore then says to himself, how am I going to hire? Each time that he has to replace someone, it becomes an issue. So we put those maternity, paternity leave proposals for those reasons. What instead have the JLP done? They have put paternity leave not as a social intervention, but as a compensation sweetener for 10% of the population, which is just government workers. They have not considered 47% single parent experience. They have not considered the likelihood for poverty, school dropout, um, criminal intervention from the single parent experience. They have considered 10% to say we are making a, a salary review and this is a sweetener. So when they say, why are we concerned if they're implementing our ideas? They're not implementing our ideas as it should be implemented. So when it comes to the idea of paternity leave. Mm -hmm. Let's see what this says. Let's see what this says. Andrew, unless it's not the father. father. It's not the father. 99% certainty. Not the father. Not the father. And it was in their manifesto. Matthew write the manifesto. No, we don't do that, you know, because a player cannot give another player a red card unless the game is, 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 is rigged. So I don't see how one player come to give other player a red card. And the referees decided that a red card is coming for that side. Full red card. The only person I'm sorry for over here, she will be at the um, PMP conference. We'll unveil it. It's like what they unveil Yes, we're in conversations. <laughs> Matthew said no already. We come now to the other concept. <laughs> you see you? Of electricity. We proposed in our manifesto that the only way we could legitimately assist those in need was through paying for a utility. And that is when a true no, Mr. Sagan can never believe after a while. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. When we proposed electricity, we recognized that it was impossible to give everybody a check in and of themselves. We also recognized that households had multiple persons, like multiple families in one household. Enough people out there will say tenement yard, but even regular single house. Sometimes two children grow up and just stay in the house with their own families. And so we recommend to much critique that we should subsidize the utility bills, water and light, as a method of mitigating against the struggles that the people were facing. Let us not forget 2021. When the Minister of Finance was saying inflation is low, I came here to say, listen, look at the difference between inflation in general and food inflation. I highlighted that food inflation was far outpacing the general inflation, and there are many within the society who only afford food. Some of the other contributors to the basket were not of their concern. And so, because it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is high quality. It's high quality. You have to pay. You have to pay for the high quality. <laughs> We're gonna come up with another one for the, for the, for the, for the others. But yeah, it's now almost two thousand dollars. But soon come to go. So when we said the electricity. I was asked in an interview, how long? We said, as long as it is necessary. This government, Senator Bunting, gave four months of assistance. Oh, four months. And even though the circumstances have deteriorated, mm -hmm. 
they have not carried it back. Instead, they come with a subsidy for bus fare. And though the, 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 the BOJ said that the bus fare subsidy had no impact on alleviating the inflation negatives, the Prime Minister came to this house and said that they have done bus fare to do just that. This is after. And asked if they can trust us. There was no way. Well, they said the governor, they claim, said that he misled them. That he made a mistake. And that is, yes, the governor said. But yeah, yeah, poor Miss Curtis. But the, if the governor said that two weeks ago, why would the prime minister repeat it now? When the governor said it never works, so who tell him this time? To come back to say, we have, that is why we have done that. When it failed. Mm. Why the Minister of Finance still saying it? Yeah. Yeah. When it has been proven not to work. It has been proven not to work. The other reality that exists out there is that I was so excited when I saw them say they will give electricity subsidies to those who have retired. Pension. And they will do it through um, solar. Mm -hmm. But you have to own your house. Mm -hmm. Now, if you understand how house ownership normally goes, your mortgage ends at the point of retirement. Yeah. So you have saved the cost of the mortgage. The man who is renting, however, his rent don't end at the point of retirement. So if there's anybody that needs some reprieve, it's the one who don't own the house. Right. Why not then, if he can't get no solar, give him the same electricity reprieve that you stole? <laughs> and you can't say, we can't say stole, because the Prime Minister said, stole, lie, um, mislead a million times. And so therefore, when we checked that situation, as it relates to the idea of using, <laughs> listen, you need to be yourself over there, right? Right? <laughs> and I never see him in the stadium. Either. He was hiding. You're, oh, you're in a royal box. But, and I must congratulate you, Senator Webby, on, on, on an excellent um, partnership. And, and um, I mean, the, the students benefited greatly. And Grace Kennedy must be congratulated. And your people were very committed. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we only get clapped when we say you do something good. Not the wrong, not the wrong, not the wrong, not the wrong, not the wrong. So, You have the results for the... Yes. The results are in. For the electricity? Yes. Electricity. When it comes to the idea of an electricity subsidy... Yes, because they won't believe. 99% surety. Not the father. Andrew Holness and the GLP is not the father. And you are not up for adoption either. Because that side has never understood the plight of the people. That side has never differentiated needs different from what they're trying to do for, for, for a narrative. Yeah. They're not trying to build a nation. They're trying to build a narrative. They say, oh, come on, so we go to student loan. In their manifesto, there was no, because the point is being made, there is no mention no mention, no mention of removing the guarantor. They are so <laughs> bereft of ideas that their barefaceness said, once upon a time, Bruce Golden said it in a speech that he was going to consider. So Bruce never said the manifesto, but put it in there. 
And they came now to claim that the PMP has no ideas, but they will put in removing the guarantor. I congratulate you on that. And I am grateful for that. But the young gentleman who the minister carried to the parliament, and stated that he left school in 2019. Mm -hmm. Had they listened to us in 2020, he would be graduating now. He would not be starting now. Ah. And that is the importance mm -hmm. of putting those with ideas in power. Because when they get licking the election and need to change the narrative, mm -hmm. that is when. That is when. That is when. That is when all of a sudden. We're going to roll out. Um, every academic is angered when there is plagiarism of ideas. Every single one. Without any, no, and with lambasting. <laughs> with lambasting. But let me, let me give you some statistics. You know, you won't understand the importance of an idea. But I've seen good ideas killed by bad implementation. But I've never seen a bad idea saved by good implementation. Therefore, the idea is of very importance. But let me tell you why we don't think you've gone far enough with the student loan. A 2022 research in Jamaica on tertiary student hunger in Jamaica. Tertiary student hunger in Jamaica. This is a published document. The result says, the study found that most of the students, 38.8%, suffered from severe hunger, followed by moderate hunger at 29.3, no, at 33%, and the lowest portion, 29.3%, with mild hunger. More than 70% of students worried each month about not having enough food, while 33% of the students sometimes do not eat for an entire day. Their physical and emotional readiness to study was compromised as 40% said hunger affected their academic work via a variety of reasons, such as headaches, poor concentration, and missed classes. The low-achieving student experienced the most hunger. This is a, in, the, in the World Journal of Advanced Research and Reviews 2022 document. So when you simply say you don't need a guarantor, that is one hurdle that we wanted to cross. Yeah. But we also knew that there were greater expenses, including boarding, True. including eating, mm -hmm. including books. We also knew that we had women and young girls being abused for food. And that is why we said one degree per household that anybody who is the first to, 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 to get into a university that they should receive a scholarship. Yes. Simply now saying you remove the guarantor and say we put in your idea. You have no to, to, you, you go and buy the egg and say a cake makes. There is no cake. You know what I love about the JLP? They say big numbers as if we don't know mathematics. <laughs> There's a 200 million dollars and then 200 million people, so therefore we only have $1 per person. They don't, they don't, they don't do the maths about it. That's just anecdotal, so we can give you $1. All right, so how much you want me to use? 200 people, you have $1 million per person. 2,000 people, you have 100,000. You have 20,000 people, then that means you have 10,000. And you more than likely have 20,000 people. So your 10,000 now is going to change the result. Yeah, yeah, them there are these numbers. <laughs> right, right? So, so. How many students we have? The university have 16,000 of the West Indies. 
right? And it don't tell us a 70% experience hunger. So that is already 10,000. Me not go you take it. Me not go case it. Me not go teach us college yet. What are you saying? What are you saying? 200 million when time you have 100,000. Right? How much have they paid in men since last year? Sorry? The government focus on immateriality. I come into that. So. Then. Yeah, man, but there's a lot to say. Yes. We come further to the to, for, for the for the what? No, no, no. We're not getting the news yet. We come now to the whole concept of the goats. That one light dear to my heart because I've never been so embarrassed. There's a goat man. Miss and me, the newspaper said Crawford Corrid. <laughs> it's sweet, yeah. But the concept of the goat wasn't residing goats. It was. <laughs> he said he Corrid. Yes, but we've been bald for two days. But I say. But the problem we have is that I observed we know a society that there was a limited understanding of ownership. I observed the Chinese Jamaicans who ensure that their children understood commerce at an early age. And the whole giving a seventh grader a goat was to show that ownership could lead to, to wealth, that, that investment in time and effort. It wasn't, yeah. any gimmick. it wasn't a gimmick of simply a goat. The goat come about because it's the cheapest thing to feed. Yeah. You have never seen me running around and saying, I want to give a fowl because I've lost money for an egg. But I know that when you're broke, goat can eat grass. And Portland was a place of grass. The next thing they're going to call me is a tree man because I want to give every one grade a tree and he sell yaki. Yeah. And he sell the mango. Because if you don't train our people in the concept of commerce, how are we going to grow when we're mainly consumers? Yes. Every Christmas, yeah. we wonder what we're going to buy. Yeah. And then uh, uh, foreign people, I wonder what they're going to sell. It was to create that concept. Yes. And the $5,000 yeah. to come. And you have to be them friend so that they can give you um, a food package. It's one of the things that hurt me the most. Like, why should you decide what a person eats? Only a pet. Only a pet. Another man should decide what he eats. Oh, yes, two corned beef and three sardines and two pounds of rice. So when we came with that idea... It wasn't only about farming. It was about owning. Yeah. The JLP then now advertised in the newspaper that we have imported how many goats? Three quarters is mine. Ooh. <laughs> Three quarters of that. Import. I mean, they have to pay all the taxes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that when they came to say we don't want a goat, it was a slap in the face yes, yes. of the concept. Yeah. Awesome. Not because we were in competition. When they said that they would prefer a laptop, as if goat farming cannot have a laptop. And then the final, it hurt me. It irks and it hurts. The final one is the tool for trade. The tool for trade, the most recent one that was not in the JP manifesto, but in the PMP manifesto. And then announced by the Prime Minister as if he's this brilliant. Um, philosopher, baby father, yeah. tool for trade. 99% sure, not the father. But the tool for trade was giant with the trust loans. 
Because in addition to giving them access to them level and access to them showing so they could have worked for a man. We said we wanted a system that he started with a loan of 200,000 and if he paid that it moved to 400,000 and if he paid that so that eventually he could become an entrepreneur. Yes. Seeking his own contracts. Yes. Not simply working for a man. That's right. So when we looked into it we wanted to ensure that he could develop and employ others. Build an enterprise. And that is why I am concerned about the implementation of the things we propose because they are being taken without the first three hurdles. They don't define what is right. They don't define what exists. They simply come with an effort to gain public attention and change the narrative instead of changing the nation. <laughs> hey, Jamaica, the only country where can deport me, you know, so anytime it goes good, me glad, you know. But let me show you how they want to change the narrative. And my friend is sitting over there, but me have a talk about Lyft. There's a project called Lyft. The Prime Minister reports that it is really targeting 17 to 25. I can be corrected if I'm wrong. In the age cohort, 17 to 25 is 300,000 persons, approximately. 35,000 a year, so, sorry, approximately 300,000. The Prime Minister says they are currently satisfying 506 persons. Senator Bunting, it would take 600 years for them to satisfy the 300,000 in the cohort. But maybe not all of them will want to do it 50%. It will take 300 years. 25% take 150 years. So when you come and say, oh, we have this program, and it's gone, you just make the youth them start to look bad. People start to say, oh, you're still there, so you're worthless, because the, the most it can go is 500 at a time. That's what the budget has indicated. And how do you choose 500 from 300,000? Even the MPs are running away from it because they're getting quadruple, quintuple, 50 times the, 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 the request. Is it a good concept? Of course. But it's an immaterial in implementation. It needs a budget 10 times what is there. But you want to say you do something. It reminds me of this back to school team. We give people two thousand dollar for your thirty thousand dollar booklets, but in Kansas, they never do nothing for you. Yeah. This needs to be expanded, but it's even not changing the nation; it's changing the narrative, and so therefore they come with that. I go again to heart, where the prime minister says that since they have made heart free, a hundred and twenty thousand people has enrolled. Now, when you hear that, Senator Bins. I got excited because if since he had made it free last year, 120,000 people enrolled, that must be in addition to when it was not free. I then read the reports. The 120 is the total that went to heart that year. It was only 17,000 more than the year when it wasn't free. And every single year, heart has increased in 2019, 23,000 more than 2018. In 2020, 20,000 more than 2019. In 2021, COVID, it went down by 39,000. In 2022, 10,000 more. And in 2023, 17,000 more. It was nothing novel. The best statement he could make is since we made it free, 17,000 more. That would be the truth. He said since he had made it free, 120,000 more. She said, the senator said, that you're not telling the truth? That it, well, you see, sometimes she don't believe that they are what they are. Because um, she's not really used to them like that sometimes. Um, so so I, will, I will look at the prime minister's presentation Read it. And, and find the area for... For her. <laughs> no problem, no problem. I, I like to learn. And I can never say the JP is doing nothing, but you don't have to get zero to fail. <laughs> you just don't do enough. 
So, huh? I'm going to find that. No, no problem, no problem. But I will find, I'll find it soon and, and, and come to you, dear. So, when the Prime Minister says that, since he, it, it has um, been done, we are at this particular level. It is something that one has to consider, and it is unfortunate that it was done in, in that way. But additionally, the Prime Minister goes on to say that there is a need for 26,000 spaces for young men who are desirous of a job and can't get a job. And in response to that, the Prime Minister says that he is going to do a program of seeking to attract those young persons. That program is to target 30,000 persons, 30 persons from 60 constituencies. So the Prime Minister says that there is a need for 1,600, uh, I mean 26,000 persons. And this total target is 1,890. The total target, Senator Bunting, is 7% of what he says we need. Remember, every year another cohort is coming in. The cohort coming in of almost 2,300 is more than their training. Now, if you're training 1,890, is this only for one year? Because the proper intent must be to carry them to full skill. Two year, three year, four year. So if it is two year, three year, four year, then this is a drop in the bucket. But it is being announced in a grand form to make the rest of us look at the other 22,000 and say, why you haven't taken up this initiative? When the only thing an MP can get from South Manchester is 30. Don't worry about that. The only thing an MP can get, I would say central, but 30 can't see of central in it. <laughs> that four love. Hot, hot. No, it, it, yeah. Hot. As, as a Crawford, we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but can you look into the reality and realize that they are seeking to change a nation? They are seeking to change a narrative that if you don't look at the numbers, you then say the youth are worthless. Why them don't take up the 500 spaces out of 300,000 for lift? Why they don't take up the 1,000 spaces out of 26,000 for the whatever he calls that? And then... Boy, I'm a local soldier, them down there, give them a 3,000 margin. There was one seat in Northwest St. Catherine, we call the candidate from the JLP, we call him Cashpot. <laughs> He got nothing focus, over Focus, Senator, Senator Crawford. Focus, man. Focus. I am focused. Focus. Cash party is in the budget. Focus, Senator Crawford. Talk about focus. No, don't forget that the Minister of Finance came here boasting that they have received much more revenue from gambling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What type of society are we building? And I don't even hear the church coming. Hmm. The sin taxes should be used to change the sin. Right. Not to be used as a, as a buttress. And any principal will tell you, gambling is a problem in schools now. It is a real problem. Major problem. Symbol of hopelessness. So the last one I'd like to speak to about simply changing the narrative instead of the nation is the much trumpeted housing program. The housing program, social housing program. The Prime Minister himself likes to collate the eight years and say we have built 213 so far. Over eight years, they have averaged 25 per year. In the budget, coming from the TF, it is said, it looks like they're going to about 30 this year. The Prime Minister himself, Senator Gale, said we need 6,000 of these social houses. 
at 25 per year, it will take 240 years. The only thing that hope comes into that is you hope the next man not here. But there is no way that this can be a legitimate proposal as a program. And to be comparing it to Operation Pride that gave thousands access. To compare it to Portmore that gave thousands access. To compare it to NHT that gave thousands access. And Land Lease that gave thousands access. 25 per year. So when I hear them over that side say that they care, I cringe. Because if this is care, I don't want to see what uncare is. The facts that face us is that this budget was an effort to change a narrative after the backsliding they received on the 26th of February. But the people will recognize and realize that what is here cannot change their lives. And the only red card that will be given is whenever this government chooses to call a general election. Thank you, Mr. President.